Hello everybody and welcome back to RuneScape 3 from scratch. There was a part in the last episode where I went to Diango and Draenor because I said I was trying to claim something but instead I got some other rewards. Well, that event has started now. Apparently it wasn't starting until the 5th because I misread the website post. But it says you can claim your list of resolutions by opening Treasure Hunter. So I know people might get mad, I might complain about the Treasure Hunter, but I'm not. It's actually not super overpowered. I mean, it's nice to get some stuff. So it says complete some tasks to... Oh god, I accidentally opened a page... Uh, did I get it or do I have to okay? We got it. I accidentally opened the website page But here we go We can look up our list of resolutions of things to do and completing the pages will Excuse me get you special rewards completing lines of it and little things So let's see what we got here find party Pete's lost wig It's in a field after a crazy Saturday night run to the north most north most part of the wilderness uh, change something about your appearance for that 2017 look, whatever that is in the sixth age. So yeah, we just have to complete tasks in this thing and we'll get rewards. So I might go ahead and try to complete some of these. So I finally had to go ahead and get a house. We actually have 52 construction and we've never, <laughs> we've never entered our house. So I think I need to build a workbench. Yes, I need to build a steel framed bench. So there we go. Oh wait, you don't have to build. I got all the things to make the ones before it. I thought you had to actually build the workbenches before these ones so basically what I'm doing is I need to make like these teak I think it's armchairs I don't know let's check my thing it's like a teak uh, teak dressers okay we need to make teak dressers I'll be able to find that in there but we have to make 80 of them so I actually had to get a house and yes I bought all the teak planks and stuff so let's go make it and hopefully the rewards aren't garbage all right so some guy told me oh there's it's loading so this mini game is called like the anima islands or something like that so what I need to do is get Rune stones from somewhere. I don't know. So we're charging a rune stone now. Ooh, that's actually some nice divination XP. Much faster than actually training the damn skill. But we can get points here that we can use to work towards getting a special ability called like Tuska's Wrath or something like that. And it's insanely good. So I'm gonna try to get it. I don't I don't know how to play this mini game exactly, but we're gonna figure it out. Alright, so I finished one game and got a hundred percent, and there's one thousand total anima, so I think you need 4,000 to get, yeah, 4,000 to get Tuska's Race, so I just gotta play the game three more times, and I'll be honest, this minigame's actually pretty fun, ooh, what other stuff can you get, an emote, okay, and a storm teleport, and a large XP lamp, which you can only buy once a week, interesting, alright, let's just go for the Tuska's Wrath ability, I'm not going for anything too fancy right now, alright, so there we go, I've gotten my 4,000 points, let me just move this down a little bit, thank you Kenpo Kid for, for giving me the advice, on a few things he told me to get the Tuska's Wrath ability so there's our 4k currency down the drain but we got Tuska's Wrath and what that does is it will deal 10,000 percent of your Slayer level as damage to your active Slayer target that's insane so basically your Slayer level times a hundred which is super fucking awesome if you on a non Slayer target the ability will deal 110 percent weapon damage and go on a 15 second cooldown so basically when I'm training Slayer I use the Tuska's Wrath ability and do a just ridiculous amount of damage to a Slayer creature which is gonna be super cool and I think if this is anything like old school at least if you get like a uh, greater demons task you can go to Krill Susaroth in the God Wars dungeon and that should count so will I be able to do a hundred times damage to Krill We'll have to see. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like one block down. I think it's supposed to be up a little bit because I can see through the back and see like just the bottom bit of the ladder. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to be able to see more. But nevertheless, there we go. Once I'm done with this, we completed our little uh, daily dungeoneering challenge. Woohoo! All right, my daily challenge has once again come around to be a uh, Slayer one. So oh, we got to get a task for Vanica because the next Slayer Master I get a Shielder and I need 75 combat. I've only got 72 and I need to do Lost City, which I'll do once I'm done with my daily challenge challenges especially actually it's funnily enough for my other daily challenge i pretty much need to do lost city so i can get into puro puro to catch the imps so let's see what we get vanica something not too bad please 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 moss giants that's actually not bad at all there's some right here oh god there's two buildings oh wait that's father ernie isn't it all right we're gonna enter the building we got our draymond staff the world starts to shimmer which means we will have completed as long as they didn't make it yeah there we go we've completed the lost city quest which means we have access to xanaris fantastic now i was gonna say something oh yeah the quest is a little bit easier in runescape 3 because the leprechaun actually teleports you right to the port serum docks but i forgot a piece of thread to craft my spider wand with there on uh and Trana, so I had to come back anyways because I'm just a doofus. Alright, so I've completed all four of my daily challenges. Let's turn them in. I'm pretty sure that the only thing I have to actually get 8,000 Hunter experience, 15,000 construction, 17, 20 Slayer, and 2,500 Dungeoneering. That's definitely not too bad. We got a Slayer level, two Dungeoneering levels, two Construction levels, and a Hunter level, plus this Challenge Mystery Bag, which is always so good. 13 Runeite Ore, wow. <laughs> 
That's actually pretty good. What is that, 130k? A little bit more than that? That is awesome. And we've got six treasure hunter keys for from the challenges and a certain amount from the thing. So someone told me you could just press 10 and then just press it and it should use all of my keys. Uh, wait. Whoa, my Jesus Christ. What just happened? All right, so we got Fallen Star, Gold Star Sticker. Oh, we can use that to complete one of the tasks on the thing that we can't complete, which we definitely can't do. Divine Maple Tree, that's pretty decent. Uh, Fire Making Star and an Attack Star. So, not bad, not bad. I just spam click these and then put this on Herb Lore, I guess. All right, so I was about to go do Monkey Madness and then I remembered, oh, I should probably have Protect from Magic when I go to fight the demon. And then I thought, you know, why don't I just get all the protection prayers? It can't cost me that much, right? And I, I was right. It's not actually costing that much. Dragon Bones are a lot cheaper than they are in old school. They're only 1,600 gold each. They give like 252 XP each when offered to a Gilded Altar. But you can also offer them to the Chaos Altar in the Wilderness. And I'm feeling a little lazy right now, so I don't want to look for a house. And I'm very interested in this method. And there's a banker pretty close to the Chaos Altar. So what I'm going to do is just go out there with no items equipped. We're going to run to the Chaos Altar, see if I can do this bone uh, prayer XP method. I really don't know what to call it. I'm sorry if I'm butchering everything in this game. But let's see if we can get to 44 prayers so we can have all of our protection prayers. All right, so here we are at the Chaos Altar. I think I just, yep, I just used them on the altar, and it automatically uses them. That's nice. So it's just like a Gilded Altar, and the only other guy here is uh, Lord Pwn. He's level 114, so I don't think he's going to attack me. But yeah, this is pretty nice. You're going to see our prayer level just ranking right up super fast. This is my favorite thing about prayer, is while it is kind of expensive to train, it levels up so fast. Also, apparently if you have the Wilderness Hearts done, you can get your bones from Harrison here, which is pretty sweet. So... Hopefully no one logs in and tries to PK me, and we can get all of our bones offered here at the altar with uh, relative ease. Ha! <laughs> the other guy logged off. He totally thought I was a scout and I was going to try to kill him. Don't worry, bro. I'm not going to kill you. All right, we're finishing up our bones. No problems with PKers, and we almost got to 47 prayer. That was actually really cheap. I don't know exactly how much I spent on these bones. Actually, we could probably just tell you out from here. Yeah, because we're below 20 uh, wilderness. But yeah, the bones are actually really cheap. If I'm right, maybe like two or three hundred K for 74,000 all right well I think I was at like 14,000 prayer XP before so like uh, 60,000 prayer XP really not bad also I had gotten hit by someone's dark pulse core or whatever the hell they're called so I did have 10% bonus XP for most of those bones but yeah prayer is actually not as bad in this game as old school uh, some people were telling me it was a super expensive viable and I'm sure it is still super expensive but it's cheaper than old school and uh, that's a win in my book. We're back here at my absolute favorite place in RS3, the Snowman's from the Christmas event. And any second now, any second now, this is the second. We're going to hit 50 ranged without ever actually training range. Now check out this newbie ass gear setup I've got for range. Now I really don't know anything about ranged gear in this game so this is what my beast of a character is looking like right now we're dual wielding rune crossbows because we're badasses so let's go fight the boss uh yeah actually i'm gonna go regenerate my prayer first but we're gonna go fight the boss and hopefully it goes well yeah i'll report back if it doesn't i believe i may have slightly overestimated the difficulty of this fight i've only been hit by once this entire time like, literally i've lost 12 health yeah this is what's called being overprepared. Oh yeah, look at that. Monkey Madness completed. Three quest points, treasure hunter keys, all the good stuff. And we can go do our training with Darrow to get us a lot of experience. Darrow, did I pronounce that right? I probably butchered it. But nevertheless, Monkey Madness is complete, which means we can use dragon weapons. Like, I mean, not dragon weapons in general, but uh, dragon scimitars. And if I can find him, there he is. I can use the Dragon Scimitar, so I'm going to get a main hand Dragon Scimitar and an offhand Dragon Scimitar, and then we can do some crazy melee stuff. Whoop you! So I think I told you guys how I do this daily now. I just use pretty much the cheapest runes so that we can make the most money in total. Like, it doesn't matter if you get the best in slot if you're wasting so much money. But look at this! The Air Rune and Earth Rune, which are two of the cheapest ones, are the best in slot, which means we're going to get 92 Viswax today, which is an insane amount of money. I think that's like 500, maybe 600k, so that's pretty nice profit. Also, this new uh, teleport emote is pretty lit. I went to my settings and realized I can change my uh, home teleport uh, animation, so that's pretty cool. All right, so Meg came back from her expedition. Let's see what we got. You followed my advice. Okay. A share of her treasure. Ooh, ooh. Apparently there's a guide on what answers you should use, so I might use that in the future. But I feel like my answers were pretty good. Let's see what we got. An XP lamp. Hey, a large XP lamp for Herblore. 
that's amazing. Now, my thing is, though, is my herb lord's really low, so this probably isn't going to give much. So would it be better if I went ahead and went back to the GE, spent some money, trained herb lord, and then used the XP lamp? I don't know if the XP lamp's that big of a deal. It's only it's not going to be that much experience anyways. 1,347. Oh, that's shit. Whoops. That's garbage. I might go train it. Okay, no, I'm not. I'm just going to get the XP. Yay, we got two herb lord levels. Woo -woo. So I did my troll invasion monthly, which I probably should have done a while ago, but it doesn't matter because it's once a month and it hasn't refreshed as far as I know since the start of the series. I bet I could check in here if I went to the mini games and the D&D. Here we go. Troll. I messed it up. Okay, I messed it up. Anyways, so a lot of people have been telling me what skills are good and bad to put experience lamps in and stuff like that. Obviously, combat is not very good because you can get very high XP per hour, which is something I've been putting it in, which is really stupid. Divination is good because the XP is super slow, but I don't personally mind divination because I can kind of AFK do it while playing old school or another game. And the ones they said are bad is uh, agility and basically any viable basically any viable is terrible they say so I think I'm gonna try to put this in agility the problem I have with putting it in agility though is it's so low level so actually you know let's try smithing I'm gonna put it in smithing I know I'm gonna get comments telling them I'm stupid for putting it in smithing but I'm gonna do it and we got 16,000 smithing XP so there is two smithing levels pretty nice this is definitely a worthwhile daily probably not for smithing but uh you know if I ever have something good to put it in then it'll be a pretty did I say daily I meant monthly. Hey everyone, in this uh, in this little clip here, I'm going to quit RuneScape 3 because I just did a bunch of herb lore and forgot I had a botanist outfit piece, which gives me extra herb lore XP. So, for the last six potions we make, we're going to use it to get some bonus XP that I could have been getting this whole time, but I didn't because I'm, I'm stupid. Anyways, there is 50 herb lore. Yeah, I know, I bet you didn't see that coming. I was like, hey, I'm probably not going to train Herblore before I use this lamp. And then out of nowhere, I was just like, you know, I feel some motivation to train Herblore a little bit. And that's because it's, like, the worst skill ever, apparently, according to people. So I went ahead and trained it up by making, you know, a great assortment of potions. As you can see here, we have 215 extra here to sell. It's really nice, this thing sometimes will mix extra potions for you, which is pretty cool. So it helps with the profit margin. I mean, not the profit margin, the loss margin. So it actually was not that bad, like, on this batch here. Where's this batch? No, this batch here, I spent like uh, 1.45 mil, or right, well, let's say 1.5 mil on supplies, and I only ended up losing like 140,000 gold. Nice voice crack. And so it wasn't that bad, and I got my herb lore up, and now I can uh, put my botanist's mask back in the bank. I can't believe I forgot that I had that. So, yeah, there we go. That's what I did. It's a thing. Okay, so from what I read online, since I did the thing with the Wicked Hood, I consumed all the talismans I could that existed, besides like Astral and Soul. I don't think they have talismans. Uh, if I show the Wicked Hood to Elris, I show her these talismans. Boom, boom, boom. Look at all that XP rolling in. Whoop, whoop. Well, that is a lot of XP. Holy shit, that was great. So now we have the Omni Talisman. Did I get a runecrafting level up? <laughs> yeah, we got the 51. And then we use the Omni Talisman on the uh, Hood. Now we should be able to withdraw Pure Essence. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what it said. So if that's true, if we can withdraw pure essence now, we can do like a daily. What the? F what is? Ha what? What is happening right now? Oh God! Oh my God! What is happening to my recording software? All right. So what I was trying to say before, you know, God split my recording software in two, is I can come to the nature rune altar, craft these nature runes, and be like, "Whoa, look at that uh, awesome XP!" Then I activate the wicked hook. Actually, I don't even need to hit it. I just hit withdraw essence. This should be pure essence now that I would do them. Yeah, it is. And then I could just craft more of these. Withdraw more essence once the... Oh, that's a weird animation. I didn't notice that. That's actually pretty cool. Withdraw more essence. Crafted the thing. You know, wait for it to be over. Withdraw more. You guys get the idea. I can do... I can withdraw 100 essence per day at the moment. And then if I do more... Um, what's it called? The thing. The thing at the Rune Crafting Guild. Rune Span! Uh, and we get the outfit pieces. We'll be able to withdraw more per day. Which is cool. So you actually get two teleports per day. So I can go back to, like, Edgeville... Get another inventory of pure essence and teleport right back to the nature altar and do more. And you can also like withdraw a certain amount of uh, runes per day, which is mostly useless. But I think the most profitable one you can do is fire runes. So I'll just be like, oh, I'll take out 100 fire runes. Turning in my daily challenges, and this time I'm going to hit yes and don't tell me again. So there we go. Then I'll be able to turn it in right away in the future. 13,000 crafting experience. Yeah, boy. 
23,000 construction XP. All right, these daily challenges definitely scale. That is amazing. All right, let's see what we got. Two crafting levels and a construction level. That is super great. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. These dailies are worth doing. Now, I was going to do my third daily, but it is a... Uh, no, don't do recommended my dailies. <clears throat> it's to kill uh, followers of Zamorak in the God Wars dungeon, and I don't have any god items. Plus, I haven't completed Troll Stronghold. I need to get my thieving level up for that, and I don't know any methods for low-level thieving, so... Maybe I'll go get my theming level up, but yeah, we just got uh, some treasure hunter keys, so I'm gonna go do that and get some cool stuff. Alright, so somebody in the comments of one of the last episodes said they really wanted me to do the broken home quest, which has started right here. They said it was their favorite quest in RuneScape 3, or one of their favorites at least. <clears throat> so she says there's a ghost in the house, and we gotta help her, so that's gonna be fun. And I heard this quest is actually really good, because if you do the uh, replayability of the quest, you get a ring that can prevent adrenaline loss when using threshold abilities. Which is uh, probably pretty good, I imagine. So, we're going to go start the quest. I'll let you guys know how it goes. There we go. We have completed the broken home quest. Small XP lamp and assigned doctor's ring. The pulled away emote. Unlocked hard mode for this. We can now replay it and accept challenges to get better rewards. So, the small XP lamp. Going straight into Herblore. 1,000 XP. Not bad. And the asylum doctor's ring. Wow, that's actually pretty decent. That's probably a ring I'm going to start using now. Uh, pretty cool. And I bet there are other better rings I can do. Can I talk to her and just see, uh, replaying and challenges, learn about challenges. Uh, let's see what these challenges are. Yeah, okay. The first challenge to unlock the second challenge. So I have to do, like, several runs of the, uh, or I can hit, no, no, talk, gosh dang it. Okay, replaying and challenges. View challenges. Okay. Complete the quest without dying. I could definitely do that. I mean, it would take a little bit of practice. Complete the quest without dying and use one or less mystery meat. I could do that. One mystery meat's not that bad. Um, complete the quest within 37 minutes. That's really easy. So, yeah, I could go do these now, but I really don't want to do it now because the quest is a little bit long, and my god, I, I died a few times, I'll be honest, <laughs> but it was pretty fun. Whoever said this is one of their favorite quests, I definitely see why. So first off, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been leaving me comments to help me out with my RuneScape 3 adventure, and I just got an easy clue casket. You guys said that with the re-rolling, anytime I can re-roll and it's not a good reward, I probably should, because then of course I always have the chance of getting a really good reward. I'm not sure what the good stuff from Clue Scrolls are in RS3, but it's really nice that it tells you the money value of it, because I have no idea. So, we're going to open an easy clue casket that we got uh, 7600 coins okay so it's not that good and we do have the option to re-roll so we will and <laughs> it's less so that's unfortunate but I'm doing what you guys told me uh, it might have been you know I lost 5k but it's no big deal because I had another roll to get something really good so yeah I really don't know why but I just decided I wanted to do some rune crafting and we're about to get a rune crafting level here so I figured I'd record it there's 60 rune crafting yeah I bet you didn't expect that one someone decided to text me right once I got the level because they wanted to congratulate me because I'm just so good at rune crafting honestly though the rune spans pretty fun I like gathering the points and I think we actually, yeah, we do. We have enough to go get the little, whatever the pants are called, from the store. So I think I'm going to go buy those, and we'll get more things to do with the Wicked Hood, you know. <laughs> I, I don't sound like I know very much about this game, and that's because I don't. I'm still learning. Give me a break. Wicked! That's what the stuff is called. Wicked. So we can buy a Wicked Cape with our 2,500 points. There we go. Dude, they have three, or two confirmations. That's pretty nice. I can honestly appreciate that so that I don't accidentally get this thing. So, I believe when I'm wearing the Wicked Cape, I can pull out more essence per day. See, there's 25 more. I've already used my thing today, but I can pull out 25 more. And then the rune thing, I don't think that changes. And the uh, teleport, I don't know if that changes. But I know I can pull out extra essence. So, as I level up my rune crafting here in rune span, I'll get enough points. Next thing will be the Wicked Row Bottom, which apparently I can have enough points to get already. I don't know how the hell you can get 7,500 points by level 55. And then lastly, 50 thousand points for the wicked robe top uh, i've also heard that these staves here the uh runic staves are actually pretty good of course i'm probably not going to get you know the runic staff or the lesser one probably the greater runic staff will be the only one that's useful to me 75 magic and 90 rune crafting at this rate i might actually have 90 rune crafting at some point in the near future so let's keep going and doing more rune crafting i'm actually having fun again thank you guys for being so helpful holy crap my mouse is really big in the recording that's super weird because it's not that big on my screen but anyways let me activate this gleaming energy and we can actually make a boon of vibrant energy which increases the amount of xp i will get from vibrant energy or vibrant memories by 10 percent, which means 10 percent faster divination leveling so i hit that and boom 
Boom. Is it just like an automatic bonus? Oh, okay, I feel the effect, so I get it automatically. Thank you to whoever it was that told me. Also, we got a task complete. I don't know where that task is for. But we've completed 104 tasks, so yeah. Also, you guys said not to straight up train divination, but to wait until the Guthixian catches open. Catches? Is that how you say it? People always tell me I say it wrong. Uh, wait till the Guthixian catches open, and then do those, and then you get bonus divination XP and all that good stuff. So, thank you for the advice once more. Oh my god, I figured it out. There's a custom cursors option in the menu for some reason. And it's been making my cursor look super big in the recording, but on my computer screen it looks normal, so... I don't know why it does that. Alright, so we're finishing up my first game of Big Chinchampa. A lot of you guys said I should do this. You can do it like twice a day, I think? So I should be doing this twice a day to get some nice hunter XP. I didn't get too many points because obviously my, um, uh, what's it called? Hunter level isn't too high. So there we go. Our minigame's done. We got 455 points. And you can trade these in for some rewards here. I'm really not sure what the good rewards are. I mean, I know these let you go to, like, special hunter areas and, like, get things. Like, look, you can go get a Pauya or a green wall or a green wall or whatever but you can also trade it for hunter xp i'm gonna look into whether it's worth it to get the hunter xp or if these flat or if these tickets are like really good so i don't want to be wasting my uh wasting my points oh yeah so apparently the grand wall tickets the best to get but i need like 76 hunter or something like that to uh, get them so i mean we'll just save them up i'm about to complete my first guthixian cash there we go i just kind of ripped out of there i said cash i meant catch so there's a divination level of wow how much xp did i get i wish i could have seen that xp drop but i definitely had a little bit to go to 61 divination so that was pretty nice the next cash to catch i'm sorry i keep saying cash catch cash okay it's called cash the next cash to award boost starts in 50 minutes so that one didn't actually give any boosts unfortunately so i'm gonna have to wait till the next one also there's these new things called memory strands and uh, apparently you can like teleport to the altar of guthix or something with them how many does it use though to teleport there oh it doesn't use any okay and then i can give my memory strands to orla fairweather I can only do that once I've prestiged at least once. Hold on, what do I do with them now? One second. Okay, so apparently I'm in the tutorial. They added a little tutorial for people like me who have no idea what the hell's going on. So basically, whenever you're training divination, sometimes you will get memory strands. You use your memory strands and, like, energy to charge these things. This requires 500 pale energy and 80 memory strands, so I'm probably just going to go end up buying the energy. It's not worth spending my time going to get it. So I'm going to go buy it. We're going to charge this, and I think we use it in the pool here or something like that, and it actually gives us divination experience. Now, normally you have to check the plinths, and it'll give you, like, kind of a hint as to where the... A uh, little thingy, the anagram is located, and you go find it, then you grab it, then you charge it, then you bring it back here. So it kind of spices divination up a little bit, and I'm, I'm not complaining. Oh my god, has this update caused the pale energy to spike? This is tier 1 divination energy, and they sold for how much each? I mean, I probably should have just gone and gotten these, but I just had to see how much they're worth. Almost 250 gold each for the tier 1. I have a feeling this update is actually going to make divination even more profitable than it was before. So let's check this engram and charge it and see what happens. Oh, that was, that was not exciting. Alright, so let's teleport back and add it to the pool. Said she's added it to the pool and harnessed its power for you for free, of course, though. Wouldn't mind a pen in the back. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. There's 7,000 divination experience. Amazing. So, add it to the pool, and now we have to go do something with these little, uh... God, I can click. I swear, where do you click on the... Okay, so let's check the echo, echo plinth, I guess. That's what I do. And grams must be charged. Select an echo to display here, so let's display that one that I charged. And boom, tutorial stage 3 out of 6. I guess I better finish this tutorial. Okay, so this is where things get interesting, actually, depending on, you know, so there, I guess there are 4, 8, 12 uh, different abilities you can get by charging these engrams, and you can select one passive effect at a time, which you can change once per week or whenever you charge a new engram. The first one I get is Guthixian Butterfl Butterflies will spawn instead of Chronicles. I don't know what that changes. We have some things like divine eggs may appear instead of bird's nest. The duration of divination springs is increased. Converting memories is a small chance to spawn an additional wisp. Bunch of cool, uh, chronicles may now be offered from your inventory. That's really good. Uh, yeah, just a lot of, uh, passive abilities you can gain. Uh, you can only have one at a time, so let's lock that one in. And I don't know what the Guthixian butterflies do. Maybe they give good things? I don't know. Alright, I've been at this for a little bit. I decided I'd come back and try some divination to get some memory strands. But, uh, 
Yeah, I've been going for like, I don't know how long it takes to get this, like maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and I haven't gotten one memory strand, so I guess I'm getting unlucky in the dev vlog. It said like you should average like 300 an hour, but if you're unlucky, you can get as little as like 100 an hour, although I might be that one person who gets zero an hour, so <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm a bit tired of divination, so let's go train something else. Also, worth mentioning, those Guthixian butterfly. oh, well, really, really. Now I seem like an ass. Anyways, those Guthixian butterflies that I got that passive effect of that come outside of the Chronicles, they give divination experience and farming experience. So, I don't know, I might keep that passive on because I really am not a big fan of farming in old school and I'm probably not going to be a big fan of farming in RS3. Okay, never mind. Apparently they just give, like, experience in your lowest skill, I suppose? So it's like Tears of Guthix every time you uh, get a butterfly to come out, so that's that's weird. So even though I can't actually do ports yet, I can still do the weekly with Meg. So what did you bring me this week, Meg? A uh, 12k and a large XP lamp for Hunter. What are we gonna get? 4200 Hunter XP. Thank you very much, Meg, and I will send her off again to get me some more free XP. Well, I've been having a pretty eventful evening. I dislocated my pinky toe on my left foot, so that was great. But hey, we just got 60 construction, so that makes me feel a little better. Uh, hopefully, uh, since I'm pretty much going to have to chill and relax, I'm going to be able to make a lot of RuneScape gains <laughs> while I'm chilling. In fact, we're almost done with our daily challenge for construction, and since we got to 60, that's going to make it give us even more XP, so I'm looking forward to some big XP gains here in just a minute. Alright, let's turn in these daily challenges. I actually only have half of them complete. I've got my summoning one done, my construction one done. I, s I have to do the Alfred whatever Brim crawl, bar crawl, whatever to unlock the Barbarian Outpost Agility course, so I have to go do that. Then do 32 laps, and I have to complete Troll Stronghold, I think, to gain access to the God Wars dungeon, and I gotta kill like 65 imps or something like that. So let's turn in our daily challenges. Ooh, 25,000 construction experience, that feels good. And 5,000 summoning XP. Oh, that was nice. We got two summoning levels to 37 summoning. We actually, oh my god, we're 78 experience away from a construction level. So we're really close to another level. Let's open our challenge mystery bags, and these will refund the costs of the stuff. Yeah, we're definitely going to need a lot to refund the costs of the beds. <laughs> Use so many planks and stuff. But anyways, this is a pretty long episode already, so I'm going to end it off here. Thank you guys very much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like rating down below and subscribe to see some more videos in the future. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Guides for Us All. Type in RIP Pinky Toe if you made it this far, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.